It's just I, I used to come down on the weekends when we, uh, when my grandma, and my granddad, would go to the beach and the fun fair and things like that. They used to come up and all that and walk, walk about and have a look at the stalls and all that, you know. It was just like a family day out sort of thing. I was only young at the time, but the the tower itself, this has always stood out. I suppose it's a, it's what you would call a sign at South Shields, isn't it? This little market, the like little hall meeting place, isn't it? You know. I've been coming to this market since I was nine years old. My mother's had this market stall for like she took her from her dad. Her dad's been over fifty years on this market place. This has been the best market for our family in my generation and previous generations. And it's my sister, she's also worked here, and, uh, and my mum's retired now, and we've taken over. I can just remember it being like crowds of people. I remember I used to go for the dinner, and to get the Greggs from there, it used to take us like about half an hour, because trying to get through everyone. Honestly, that's how I can remember that from being little. I used to always be in the box in the, underneath the store. Fancy dress, used to have a fancy dress competition every year. So many memories as well because uh, all the trainers stuck together. But, yeah, everyone used to help each other and everyone used to go out with each other. Like on a night time, even after they used to finish the market, they used to all meet up on a night time, whatever, on a Saturday night. Well, I lived up my land road right opposite the station. Our house front door faced into the station hotel where I used to deliver papers for. Warden's wholesale to botanist, one of the shops in my on the bottom half. And I came in one day and someone had snatched some cigarettes. So I jumped on my bike when he ran out and I followed him down to the marketplace. There was a, I believed it to be the locomotive at the time. It was all bombed out when I knew it. And uh, he ran in there, so I waited outside of the police coming. And uh, the police come and arrest him. So I got a little increase that week on me wages. <laughs> Thanks for catching the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Would it just be coppers, but in them days it was a lot because I used to work for Craven Davis, you know. Same thing, type of thing. I used to make quite a bit of money on tips and uh, we served all my motion road, cafes and all that. The horse and carts. Well, I was up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and, I used to get up at four o'clock, walk up the race street at the top of my land road where the milkman lived. The Minock would walk round to the stable, get the horses out, do the cart up, take it across the Craven Dairies, which was the top of Ellesmere Street in the back lane. And then uh, we'd start with deliveries. And when we got to James Mather Street, I used to jump off the milk cart and straight into school, so I was tired when I got there. I remember the commando and the pub in the marketplace used to be really, really busy. You no, know, especially on the Fridays and Saturdays. And then when they shut all the shipyards, they never, never come back to there, you know what I mean? It wasn't the same anymore, you know? It was a very popular place because you got all the coal miners and all the shipyard builders, you know, coming from across the river, you know? Everybody, when they were young, used to go there, you see, because used to work and have a good time, you know? And that's where I used to go. They had a jukebox where you could just put the money in the jukebox. And just... The store owners were all cheerful and they always shouted their ways out, you know. And I mean, I've been on the train dozens of times when people have said, oh, I'm just going down to the Shields market. Well, they had uh, lots of, you know, there's no chocolate shops, anything like that. Just, well, they had stores like that. Lovely stuff, you know, the dope that's not in vogue now. Like coconut caramels and they used to come just to get those. Maynards and all those people with the toffee. The, that far side was the clothes, second hand, you know. Well, people had no money anyway, so they had to look for stuff like that. Yeah, your Bruce. Yeah, there's a bag there for you. Uh, uh, Still bag, and I'll Bruce food. I said, what from here? Right down the dock, where we live, like. You were always there. Take the bits of Bruce food. I said, well, I'll wait back down. When the finish has to get mounted, put the stores away, you know. Then, then my sister was from, she had the bin from school, she was pushed push chair. Don't you have five o'clock like Bruce food, all of Cut the bits out, don't you? Every Friday, I don't know for years. You must make up a pies and sell it to the neighbours, you know, for like a hate and a penny each, you know. You know. Every Sunday she was baking. The market was open seven days a week then, like. And uh, hey, the, the market stores was fantastic, man. Some of the horse and carts, don't you? You sell fruit, uh, all sorts of the carts. The horse, well, tethered up with a big basket on the mouth, you know. You just get all kinds, man. 
They finished at five o'clock. But it'll be from school was home like now the one in the house. The most I've ever known anybody be in the cell was 14 in one night. There was no light, there was no water, it was just a stone cold floor. Um, one old time I said the most he's been in there with is 14, including himself. There was that many pubs around this area, because that was all built up, that was all shops, houses and everything. You couldn't have a half in every pub and still be sober. And that's why most of them ended up in there. Did you know we used to have the biggest Union Jack in the world? And that's say the market. It was officially the biggest Union Jack made out of stone. It was set in stone and that was replaced just before 2000. My grandfather was locked up in that jail. Right. He'd had 13 children, seven sons, and the, only, the seventh son was the only one to survive, and he went out and got drunk, and he got locked up for the night. <laughs> me and mother, there used to be uh, tenements there years ago, and me, me and mother used to go, our friend used to live in the top floor of the tenements, right? And it was always very dark going up the stairs, because never had light bulbs, because it was a poor area. And um, my mum went home one day from our friend's house, and she said, I wish I had uncles like Ivy's got. Right. So my mother nearly got her head knocked off. Right. And it wasn't until she married my dad when she was 20 that she realised what she got wrong for. I remember the little streets and used to be an old pub over there that was bombed during the war. I was called like corrugated. My mum was a bear and I used to come down with my dad. So I used to always say, you know, what happened to them? I got bombed. Uh, but there were lots of little streets yeah. down towards the river and the water could take a lot of them. I used to go down there. Go and my dad and he used to go and get the, the leather to cover with shoes. He used to sell the uh, loose leather and stuff like that. And he used to have a tool. The market was a completely different market there. Yeah. He used to have the vans on and he used to be selling uh, China. He used to get uh, different uh, people from all over. He used to come in, come all from all, all around. I remember the bridge and I remember the city of Durham. We used to go there because we could just go upstairs. Uh, he used to be there. Um, Eagle Vault, I remember that. That used to go right way through. There's a bit of a, you know, funny, funny place, like a typical um, old-fashioned pub from the, like the seaman stairs and all that. I never had no trouble, but you could see yeah. in trouble. Even when I was a, like a teenager, there was loads of dances and places to go. And there was no drinking, it was all soft drinks, you know, there was no alcohol. Uh, and we used to have a good night. We used to have uh, local groups on and stuff yeah. like that. And there was always plenty of places to go. I've seen um, Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> I, I, was, uh, I was there, Jimi Hendrix, from the Cellar Club. Dave Clark by when they were on, when they were around, I've seen them, Tom Jones. Well, used to, um, then you had the Latino. Uh, used to be like a police, like a Doctor Who box in the right, market, yes. I remember that. Uh -huh. And there used to be toilets, you know, there was like conveniences just over here, like a glass, like glass you walk over like glass. Yeah. And there used to be a horse trough just over there, I mean, it's, it's all gone now. It was there when I was, uh, you know, when I was younger, so I was born in 1947, you know. Right. But like I say, um, this place was vibrant, you know, it had, um, like if you wanted to go out with your wife, you know, it had pubs and, you know, um, it was great. So jump on the ferry, over no shields, you know, and later on come back, you know, and you'd have a drink, a couple of pubs. I must have been in Carlisle one Easter, as bunches of short-stemmed wild daffodils were for sale in the covered market. Wild daffodils would send anybody to Wordsworth. I recall reciting the daffodils in South Shields Harton Methodist Church, which brings me to an Easter when, chill in new summer clothes, we walked the miles from that church in Cleden to South Shields Marketplace and sang Jesus Christ is written today, hallelujah, as part of the Easter service. Meanwhile, back in Harton Methodist Church at Cleden, oranges were waiting for us. <laughs> 